rise in food inflation in Nigeria has significantly impacted the economy and the purchasing power of consumers, mainly because food constitutes a significant portion of household budgets. The food inflation rate in September 2023 was 30.64% yearly, 7.30% point higher than the recorded rate in September of last year. This has led to a decline in the purchasing power of Nigerians, particularly low-income earners who find it difficult to afford basic necessities such as food, housing and health care. We have Mukta Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst, to join us. Look at the 2024 uh, budget estimate and, of course, the inflation rate of the country. Mukta, thanks for staying with me. Let's start with inflation figures before we get into the budget um, estimate. As food prices increase, consumers are forced to reduce expenditures on other essential items. Now, this leaves them uh, with less disposable income on other goods and services, reducing spending in the economy's non-food sectors. What did you really make of the latest inflation figures? Yeah, just you now, I'm not surprised about the latest inflation figure. Uh, you know, it's something that has been on. Um, I think we are beginning to see the effect of the removal of subsidy. We are beginning to see the effect of the high cost of diesel. We are also beginning to see the effect also of the exchange rate volatility. So um, I was surprised um, about the type of inflation pressure that we are seeing at the moment. Uh, it's something that is expected, uh, but now we we basically trying to see how we can curtail it. But like I keep saying, containing inflation will not have to deal with it like other countries of the world deal with it. Our own um, condition is very peculiar, and I think that what the CBN will need to look into as like the multi policy committee and also the physical side need to begin to come up with strategy on how to deal with these inflation pressures. Because you, when you look at um, the inflation numbers, you show that uh, food food items, and uh, this is due to high cost of transportation. It's the security challenge is still there in some areas. The farmers are still not able to go to farm. And then, again, you see um, those pressure in uh, wheat, all these important um, goods. This has also have to deal with the, um, we have to deal with the export rate, I mean, yeah, exchange rate volatility also. So definitely, I keep saying that for us to tackle the inflation, um, especially for household items that we import into the country, we need to do one of the two. With either we provide them with FX or we reduce tariff so that this, these goods will come down and in turn will bring down inflation. The the rise in inflation has kept investment uh, real return negative, affecting market participation and performance. Foreign market participation has declined, reflecting the foreign investors' disinterest in the market and diversion to countries with positive real returns and less currency volatility like the United States. Do you see us bouncing back anytime soon? Well, bouncing back <laughs> is something that will happen. But when will it happen is what nobody can uh, really say at the moment because um, we are dealing with a lot of issues. In the area of foreign investors, they definitely want to come, but some of them already have their forms trapped here. So that is a major problem. The effect is still a challenge. The, the result is not going despite the improvement in, in crude oil production. So no investor wants to come into the market at um, uh, 1,000 uh, something naira. And then you are maybe you are exiting the market. Um, uh, they want to come at a lower rate. And then we would want to exit even at the more lower rate. But as it stands now, this when you look at the official issue. figure, when they want to come in, and if they want to do that, and the parallel figure, they don't want to come in because the difference between the parallel and the official market is too wide. I think that's the greatest challenge they are having now. Until we begin to um, look at what, and when we're breaching that gap, then we'll begin to attract foreign investors because then they will now know that um, um, the, the entry and exit will, will be screenless because that means liquidity is being met.
Now, to combat the soaring inflation, some have said that the Central Bank of Nigeria can employ monetary policy tightening measures such as raising interest rates and increasing reserve requirement for banks. You know, Mokhtar, my question right now would be, all of these uh, proposals or propositions, are they still working or will it eventually work going forward? Because a lot of uh, postulations have been made uh, concerning the monetary policy and fiscal policy you know, measures and they seem, they seem not really working. If I get you, you're talking about the, the infl inflation uh, targets yes, of yes, the yes, federal government. Yeah. Well, I, I think um, they know this, the, 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 the challenge. And I keep saying that uh, the challenge is uh, the exchange rate, volatility, and supply constraint. So we shouldn't um, deal with our issues like the other part of the world deals with their issues by just hiking rates and thinking that will solve it. But with Nigeria, it's a more peculiar condition. We are looking at microeconomy inflation. We are looking at demand and supply inflation. We are looking at um, supply chain inflation. We are looking at um, um, price volatility, uh, due to inflation due to price volatility. And so all these are, are issues that we need to deal with with structural uh, uh, policies. Because when you look at um, the supply chain, you are looking at the cost of production. Production induced uh, uh, inflation, especially with um, lack of power for industry. So they have to sort of power themselves. And when they have to do that, they have to buy diesel, and diesel prices, as it stands now, is, is, is very high. So definitely, uh, when the federal government is targeting that, maybe they have other cushioning that they will, they will need to do. And uh, one of that major cushioning that they can do is to bring stability in the FX market. That is the Monetary Policy Committee um, issue, or the Monetary Committee Monetary Policy. They need to bring stability. They need to, to attract liquidity, whether they are going to attract that liquidity by borrowing liquidity or by, uh, by, uh, by attracting foreign direct investors or portfolio investors. As it stands now, it's difficult for you to get the uh, portfolio investors to come to Nigeria because of what I said initially, the gap. So they can achieve it, but I think it's going to be an equilibrium tax because we're already doing inflation at, at, at about 27%. And uh, we don't know where to end at the end of the year. We could go as high as 30, 30 to 32%. And if we do that, that means that for them to achieve that inflation price then uh, of 21%, they may have to struggle to have to bring that inflation by almost 10%, which is a very, very difficult tax to do, especially if you are not dealing with the structural issues that have to do with supply chain, and then also the most important one, the exchange rate volatility. All right, now let's uh, quickly get back to the proposed uh, budget and uh, what happened at FEC uh, just recently. The revenue estimate of the budget is based on the assumption that the price of crude oil will average at $73.96 uh, uh, per barrel uh, uh, versus what we have at uh, the 2023 budget, which is about $70. While oil production will rise by 1.78 uh, million barrels per day, what we have currently with the 2023 budget is one. 1.69 uh, million barrels per day. Meanwhile, an exchange rate of 700 naira to the dollar has been earmarked, you know, as against what we budgeted for this year, which is $435.57. Okay, exchange rate at the I and E window was 848 naira, 12 copper to the dollar as of. Uh, Two, just two days ago, which means that the 2024 budget is expected to reverse the depreciation rate of the Naira. What do you really think? Are we likely to see an improvement in the country's fiscal position with all of these uh, budget estimates that the FEC you know, has proposed for 2024? I expect it. Uh, we flow the currency. Uh, we are looking at uh, exchange rate of 700, which I think is very, is very um, doable. Uh, even yesterday, the I in window, the market closed at 764, uh, preferable to the other two days ago, like you said, that it closed at 848. So definitely, uh, we, we'll see that convergence in the uh, in the uh, I and E window. Uh, hopefully, if we, we bring in liquidity, my challenge with that uh, window will be now that the 43 buy and item are, are going to be accessing that window. Will we be able to meet up liquidity and then we still have the forward liquidity to deal with, especially with the airlines companies? So, um, if you look at that with uh, what they spent, I think, I, I think it's achievable. 
in that data. Oil, oil at 1.76, I think that's also achievable if you know that we have moved from a low of about 900 million barrels to about 1.69. So I think they are even being more conservative by attacking it at that price. I think it, 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 it could be better than that, which I think is a very, very good one. Then the benchmark of oil at the current at 72 point something dollars. So by, for me, it's fantastic. Hopefully, the National Assembly will not do what they are known to do by increasing that um, rate to sell international price at today's this and that. Because uh, international price at the close of market yesterday in Brent crude was about $92 per barrel. And remember that um, in January, OPEC nations, especially Saudi Arabia, are planning to cut um, production. But Nigerians will, Nigeria will still gain uh, its own because they were not able to meet their quota. So definitely that may will end more efforts. And we must not forget that also the uh, Israeli conflict with Palestine will also have an indirect, uh, uh, indirectly affect the market just like the Russian-Ukraine crisis is doing now. So when you look at that and the price they affect it, you would say they are very conservative, and I think, for me, that is a good move. All right. I don't know if I can quickly just uh, chip this one in. Finally, I want you to just uh, quickly, in 30 seconds, uh, talk about um, the approval of the f uh, of the FEC on the World uh, Bank loans of um, $1.5 billion, uh, which calls for consensual uh, financing. You know, that's what the Ministry of Finance is telling us now. Aside from that, uh, we've also got in um, um, an approval for $80 million uh, loan by the AFD, you know, which they say will help to fund the 2024 budget. Should we be wrong? With our borrowings right now, Mokhtar, very quickly. No, we shouldn't be worried. Man, that is down here, you no, know, for um, any amount of uh, effects that we can borrow to boost our liquidity. I think we should do it now. But again, we should tie it to the productive sector. Mm -hmm. They said on that budget 2024, which of this uh, sector is this um, uh, borrowing going to go into? That should be what we should be looking at. But as more, as, like I said, we need to borrow either to show our reserve. We mm. need to. We, we also need to begin to do and um, trade, especially mm. in the area of tr uh, good oil trade, right. so that we can boost our reserves. So, I think it's, a, it, it's any amount that we can go in efforts to boost our liquidity, so that uh, the exchange to be right. able and attract investors is, is something I will support. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mokhtar Mohammed. That's as much as we can take on the show. My guest has been Mokhtar Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst. And we have been looking at the 2024 uh, budget um, parameters and, of course, um, the rising inflation that is plaguing the country. Many thanks once again. And that's the size of the show for today. My name is Justin Akadonia. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.